Welcome back to Andrew Says. Thank you for watching. Let's get right into it. The border wall. Whether it's 5 billion, 11 billion, 20 billion, it's really just a drop in the bucket that is the federal budget. So I kind of feel like we are just being told to argue over this while a bunch of other stuff is going on. Now, the biggest argument I see against building a wall is that it won't be effective. There's too many people and the vast majority of people are coming legally from visa overstays. So I went ahead and looked up the latest numbers for that. USA Today has it at 600,000 illegal visa overstays through air and through sea. Now, if you cross-reference that with the latest numbers for illegal migration across the southern border, it's actually 521,000 as of 2018, I believe, if I'm not misremembering that. Yes, 2018, 521,000. So we're almost at 50-50 here already. So already this argument of it's 75, I've heard as high as 80% of people saying that it's coming from visa overstays, and you can't really stop that because it's from people flying in. So how can you really stop that? So it's 521,000 people. Now, if we can throw some other stats at you here. CNN, so this is coming from the belly of the beast. CNN has a list of where the predominantly where predominantly people are coming from when they live in America illegally. So Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and as you know, Honduras is a place where all the migrant caravans gathered together to go up to the border, thousands of people, some people said 3,000, some people said 7,000, and El Salvador is where MS-13 comes from, so violent, poor countries. Now when you talk about people coming up to the border, as I mentioned, the latest statistics were 521,000 people. That is 11,000 people per week. Now if you compare that to Canada, where we had a bit of a crisis of 2,000 people coming per month to one spot and basically forming a line, and the federal government was like, we can't handle this, and now there's people being flooded into homeless shelters, into university campuses, and into hotels to try to take care of them. So I think the border agents down south would be very happy with 2,000 people a month because right now they're dealing with approximately 11,000 people per week. All those countries we listed, Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, it's very important to note that people coming illegally from these countries, these are very violent countries way more violent than the United States. Everybody wants to say gun crime in the United States is, is the pinnacle and all the guns here are what causes people to you know, commit these crimes and what's, what's the difference if we let more people in because America's so terrible and violent already. So I went ahead and looked at the gun homicide statistics from these countries, from the countries where it's the majority of where people are coming from. So go ahead and take a look at this. We've got Honduras, we've got El Salvador, we've got Venezuela, Colombia, Costa Rica, Mexico, Panama, all these countries with higher homicide rates from guns in the United States. So with the US down here at 4.6 per person, then we go up by maybe two more per person, and then when we get we get to El Salvador, it gets to be a little silly, 26, and then we've got almost 30, and then we get into the, the really silly territory, the extra silly, silly territory of Honduras, which is almost 66 homicides from gun per 100,000 people. So to say that America is way more violent and way more has way more gun violence than these other countries where people are purporting to bring more people in that you don't know, that you can't vet, just let them come in. That, that's really silly and it's a bad statement to make to say that America is less safe than these other places, so why not let all these people you don't know unchecked, unverified come in. And then the next thing you can look at is the amount of gun ownership. So if we look at the gun ownership for America per 100 residents, there's 20 more guns than there are people. So you can say 20% more guns than people in the United States, but they remain at number 16 for gun homicides against all these countries that have far fewer guns. So it's probably just an American anomaly for some reason that more guns seem to equal less murder and less crime. But when you look at certain things, like the fact that most mass shootings happen in gun-free zones. And then the fact that most places, California, Chicago, places with very strict gun control and gun laws have the highest crime rates. So it, it, anybody who thinks about a terrible place to live in America, you think of Chicago, uh, outside the city in Chicago in terms of dangerousness. And they have some of the strictest gun laws. So when you do research these statistics, something you'll find about people coming across the border illegally is that they tend to choose the statistics 
a, a window, let's say, usually it's around 04 to 14 or 04 to 2016, where they had a lot of people coming for visa overstays. When overall, it's 42% is what they actually have to end up admitting in these articles that comes from visa overstays. So whether it's 60, 40, 40, 60, or 50, 50, what we really need to do is realize that people are staying from visa overstays and people are jumping the border illegally. So clearly a wall would help with that and it would be a lot less strain on the Southern Border Patrol. Now you can say that why not just get more drones? Why not get more uh, Border Patrol agents? But I ask you, what's easier? locking your door at night or standing in front of your door while it's open all night long and and making sure nobody comes in is it easier to to do security for a wide open let's say football field or is it easier to do security for a football stadium with certain entry points where people can only get in using their tickets people that are supposed to be there people that you know who they are and that they're supposed to be here so if anything goes wrong track their ticket number and you can find out who they are so when you look at the actual statistics of visa overstays versus border crossings, you see it's not quite what the news says. It's not quite what the news says in regards to where these people are coming from, it being just as bad as the United States or not as bad. It's actually far more violent countries in terms of gun crime specifically that are coming into this country. And if you start letting people from violent cultures come into your country where you don't know where they are, who they are or where they're coming from, that's when you start to run into trouble for letting criminals through. Because who's on the run? probably poor people and probably criminals, okay? So at the very least, it's gonna be people you're gonna be paying for, and at the very worst, it's gonna be people who are committing crimes.